Hello, David here, and the project for today is diagnosing a problem with a vacuum cleaner. This is a Hoover Elite 700 Model U 4511-900. We've had this vacuum cleaner for about 41 years, and it's been great. It's light. It's only 12 and a half pounds. It does have a six and a half amp motor. The newer Vacuum cleaners these days probably have 10, 11, and 12 amps, which are pretty powerful. But for us, we don't have any long hair people or, or pets dropping or shedding hair all the time, uh, so we don't have a lot of hair to pick up. So um, I was kind of disappointed. I was vacuuming the other day, and I heard a, a large whining noise. And I thought, oh, the belt's broken. We'll have to replace the belt. But I tipped the... Uh, vacuum on its side and I noticed the brush rollers were still spinning and I felt up here in the bag you open up the bag take the bag off of here see that right there there's no air coming out of here to fill up the bag with dirt so there's something else going on so I want to open it up see what's going on uh, for some reason, this has become vacuum cleaner central over here. But these vacuum cleaners are for another video. I'm going to be working on this one today. See what's going on. As you can see, the brush roller is still attached to the motor. It's not spinning freely. And uh, as a matter of maintenance, you've got to get into your vacuum cleaner uh, frequently and get any hair out of here because the hair could get in the rollers slow down the rollers and when you slow down the rollers that puts stress on the belt it could wear your belt out prematurely and when you're stressing out the belt you're stressing out the motor too and that could that could wear your motor out I don't really need to uh, take this cover off but I'll show you how to do it anyway in case you have to uh, change your roller. There are two tabs, one tab here and one tab there. Just get in with your screwdriver and pry. Might need two screwdrivers. Pry that tab. Pry that tab. Go. Whoops. I can see the belt here. And the rollers just fit in. They just ride in a channel in there. Just like that. Now this one has a slot in it. See that slat? That slat has to be vertical to fit in there. There we go. In order to get to the belt or the motor, you got to pry up this carpet pile switch. This is the adjustment for the thickness of the carpet pile. That just slips on there. And then, it's a matter of just grabbing the housing. There's no screws holding the housing on. Just pull it up. I know it sounds like it's breaking. out of there. That's that. It's going to be filthy in there. Here's the light. If you need to change the light, just pop 
pops out like that. I don't know what they call that socket. So here's the motor. Here's how you get the belt off. Just slides off the shaft like that. There's one screw holding the cleaner bag assembly out to the motor. And there's a nut on the back side, so don't lose that nut. Pry this off of there. There you go. Here is a uh, switch right here. These contacts right in there. They connect the switch to the they connect the switch on the handle to the contacts on the motor. And then the the uh, the lint and dust comes out through here and goes up into the bag. So there's four screws holding the motor down. These are Phillips head screws. I don't know if I'm going to be able to repair this. I checked the replacement motor cost if the problem is the motor. And uh, I believe it's discontinued. I've seen prices anywhere from $150 to $200. It's probably not worth fixing. It is, that's the motor. So if I can look down in there, see if there's anything evident. I don't see anything obvious. There's Phillips screws holding this fan housing. Let's take this fan housing off. For some reason it's not sucking. It's good that the the roller the roller brush is spinning, but there's no suction. That's a problem. There's a whole lot of schmutz in there, but I don't think that was causing any problems. Well, here's a problem. This impeller fan is loose. I'm holding the shaft here and spinning the impeller.
that's why we're not getting any suction. This impeller is working independently of the motor shaft. I don't see any screw on this end that holds it down. It almost looks like it's riveted on. Let's see if I can pry it off. Try not to break it. That would be cool if I could just epoxy it on. Get it to work. It comes. So it's threaded on. See that? I don't know well, you can see that. Clean it really good with acetone. And I'm gonna put some Loctite on it. I'm gonna let the Loctite sit for 24 hours. That's the good news. This is not good news. These threads are stripped. I'm going to have to see if there's a workaround for that. I don't know if I could get the light in there to show you, but it's definitely stripped. Maybe that'll show you. There's no threads left in there. I might be able to get a nut. I could pop out this threaded insert an epoxy and nut in there that'll fit the threads. I might be okay in that regard. My thread pitch gauge tells me I'm gonna need an 18 pitch nut for that. 18, 18 I think it's 18 threads to the inch. Anyway, 18 matches it perfectly. Gotta find the right diameter. I've been calling all over and I can't find a replacement part for this motor. This is called the fan nut and I suppose because it's got a sleeve and set in there that's threaded. In this case this used to be threaded. So the parts been discontinued. From what I've heard was that Hoover has been bought out a couple of times and now they're making their vacuum cleaners in China and they don't want to make parts for vacuum cleaners they no longer make. I did find another cross-reference. There is another vacuum cleaner that used the same fan nut but that's been discontinued as well. So what I did find out that the threads on this shaft are left-hand threads and it's a 18-pitch uh, nut, so it's 5 16 diameter by 18 pitch. I went to a hardware store and they gave me some left-hand nuts. Actually, I wanted to buy them and he just gave me two of them. He said it was no charge. Put these uh, thread on by going counterclockwise. And my thought was, my original thought was to pull this out with heat and then inset a new nut in there, either by heat or epoxy. And then I discovered this shaft of this motor is inset so that this part, the stem part of the fan, fits inside that inset part. I think that's to keep a low profile to make a wind tunnel effect. So that was out the door. So. I thought what I would do is cut this down to get to the end of the insert and see if the threads of the motor came past the insert and if it didn't I was going to cut this down including cut the insert down as well so I could get the threads of the shaft to uh, stick out past the insert 
and then run a nut on it to tighten it down. So I thought I'd call around some more. The internet didn't do any luck, so I called all the shops in the surrounding area. Nobody had anything until I called Viking. Viking Sewing Machine and Vacuum, not a sponsor. So the man at Viking goes, I don't have that part, and I can't get it, it's discontinued. But a customer was just in, and he had a similar model, and the chassis was broken, and he said, just throw it in the dumpster. I threw it in the dumpster yesterday. If you want to come get it out of the dust out of the dumpster, it's yours for free. So I ran right over there. I swear all these vacuums are driving me crazy. Guess which one it is. Come on, take a guess. Alright, it's this one. That's the one that's supposed to have the parts I need. It's really nice of Viking to let me have this for no charge. He could have charged me $20, $30, $40 for this. Because the motor works great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fan out of here, make sure it fits, and probably cannibalize this for parts. In case more parts break in the future, that motor's worth $150. So I'll hold on to that motor as well. I'm not going to film the teardown of this vacuum cleaner because I already showed it in an earlier clip. So here's the one I got out of that old vacuum cleaner. And the veins are a lot more beat up than on mine. You can see the difference. But this one won't fit. And I noticed something. I thought this was an insert that's threaded. This is a washer because this washer came out of there. So the threaded part, if you look deep in there, I don't know if you can see it. Deep in there I can see a change in color. It looks like there is there's a threaded insert deep down in there. So I don't really know if my Cutting and putting a nut on the back of this would have worked at all. But let's try it on. Which is the old one. The old one's the dirty one. Yeah, don't lose that little washer. Because if you do, the fan will be dragging against the housing. So remember, turn counterclockwise to put it on. And the torque of the motor will be a self-tightening feature because the motor will turn... Which way does the motor turn? I don't know which way the motor turns, but anyway, because it's the left-hand screw on the shaft, it'll be a self-tightening feature on this. Whatever you do, resist the temptation to put a wrench on the end of the shaft because this is where your belt goes, and if this is uh, scratched, it's going to ruin your belt. Not right away, but it'll eventually tear up your belt. I think I'm going to clamp some, some wood on this to get a good, good tight fit on that fan. Okay, I've got two pieces of wood on each side of the shaft, and I got that secured with a C-clamp. And I'm just going to tighten this impeller down. Get it hand tight. Tighten that clamp a little more. I don't think it's going to come loose. The guy at the vacuum shop said not to use Loctite on the threads. He said it's going to self-tighten. And it didn't take a lot of force to take this off of the old motor. Here's the old motor, by the way. This is 7 amps as opposed to this. It's either 6.5 or 6.6 .6 amps, so 
Got an extra half amp out of it. I just tested the motor. It works great. I'm going to keep that on hand in case this motor burns out. That should be good and tight. My recommendation is not to put a clamp on the end of the shaft because it was binding and I could barely turn it. So I had to clamp the shaft again with the pieces of wood and the C-clamp. I had to remove the fan, put it back on. Now it's spinning freely. And I think that's just it. Just do it hand tight or you might have to get a washer about this size and put another washer in here. I'm not comfortable with the possibility of this fan tightening up on the shaft as it's being used. I'm afraid it's going to rub on the housing. So I went to my washer collection, found a washer that fits on the shaft. So I'm playing with this motor. I'm not feeling any rubbing at all. I think I'm going to hold off on putting the washer in. And if it tightens up on, our, on its own and starts binding, then I'll add the washer. So I'm going to keep this washer off to the side but just don't want to increase the distance between the fan and the housing because then it might have less efficiency in vacuuming so that's my plan let's reassemble this thing i'll try to speed up the motion so i don't bore you out of your skulls This pin goes in that hole, right there. And this rib, goes on the outside, goes along here. That female contact Goes over these two male plugs right there, and this part is from the switch. I'm not going to get far because I put. I put the screw back in the place so I wouldn't lose it. This is how that nut is captured on the back. It goes right in there. Now we can put the cover on and move the carpet pile to the middle so it doesn't miss its slot in the front of the case. Put 
put the front on first. And then pound in the back. I'll put the pile height lever on. This face is to the front. See where the line, that white line goes over? That part faces the front. It's also slanted. So the slant goes forward. Let's try it. That scream was at first. First of all, I need to put the bag in. Let's see if there's air coming out of here. <laughs> Don't run it without the bag on. Okay, the bag is on. It's blowing pretty well. Guess it's not good to run on the concrete. Try it again. This should inflate. It inflates very well. Let's try it out on the carpet. Here's a good subject to test because this carpet is filled and full of a lot of pine needles. There it is, the Hoover Elite 700 model U4511. I'm going to consider this video a success. I want to thank the people at Viking Sewing and Vacuum for giving me the donor vacuum. They were very friendly, very nice. I'm going to go to them if I need to buy any sewing machines or vacuums in the future. Might even go to them for more parts or service. If you like your old American-made vacuum cleaner, and if you don't want to buy a new overseas manufactured vacuum cleaner, I recommend getting a parts vacuum and just keeping it on the side in case you need to cannibalize it for parts. This vacuum at 12 pounds is a very good vacuum for someone who's enfeebled and can't pick up those brand new vacuums that weigh 15 to 20 pounds with all those attachments stuck on the side that tend to fall off. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I notice some of you guys are watching my videos and not subscribing. Shame on you. I'm going to come to your house and knock on your door and say, subscribe.